Hello. Hello and welcome. Thank you very much for joining in. My name is Tom and this is A Boat on the Broads. If you're new to my channel, we tour around the local towns, villages and waterways that make up the Norfolk Broads, investigating and discovering a bit about the history and the lifestyle that makes up Norfolk and the Broads in particular. Today's episode we're going to be focusing on Sunter Laves, which is the marina where my boat is moored and having a little bit, little bit of a look at the history of the village, what's here and why it makes such an ideal location for a mooring. So first up let's have a look at the map and see where exactly in the Broads Sunter Laves is. For those of you who don't know where the Norfolk Broads are, we're tucked right in on the east coast of the southern United Kingdom. And as you can see, St. Laves is sort of nestled right in the middle of the Broads. There's the big long cut going up 45 degrees to the northwest, and that takes you to Reedham and on to Norwich. Or you can bear northeast and go towards Great Yarmouth and the coast, out to the coast or to the North Norfolk Broads or you can head south and go towards Beckles, which is sort of the end of the navigation from a large craft perspective. Without further ado, should we head on out and go and investigate what's in the local area? So we've made it down to a rather blustery St. Alaves Bridge. Um, you can see it over my shoulder. We're going to take a close look in a minute. It was built in 1847, which replaced an even older bridge that was built in 1509, which replaced an even older ferry site that was here long before that. So there's been a crossing at this point in St. Alaves for quite a while. As you can see, this bridge is an important transport link between Beckles and Great Yarmouth. The bridge was designed by George Edwards and is an important example of cast iron construction. The last major renovation was the decking that was replaced in 1920 and then an additional pedestrian walkway which you can see here was added onto the side of the bridge in 1960. Another interesting feature of St Laves is the drainage pump that was built just on the east bank of the River Waveney. The drainage pump is a small open trestle pump with a scoop wheel built in 1910 by Dan England of Ludham. In 1928, the open trestle was weatherboarded to a smock design and the pump ceased working in 1957 when it was replaced with electricity power. The pump itself was last renovated in 1975 Whilst technically not open to the public, you can walk around the base of it from the riverbank. The other major historical landmark in St. Laves is the Priory, which was founded in 1216. Should we go and check it out? So this 12th century priory was named in honour of Olaf, the King of Norway, whose Christian message was baptism or death. The undercroft dates from the early 14th century. The columns and the brick arch vault supported the refectory or the dining hall above our heads here.
This fabulous old undercroft of the rectory still remains to this day. Um, it's rather, <laughs> rather echoey, um, but a fantastic relic. Although in the late 1800s, the floor was raised and this place was turned into a cottage until about 1902. Can you imagine living downstairs in an old priory? Very weird. Fortunately, the Undercroft escaped destruction at the time of the suppression and survives as an important early example of the use of brick in medieval England. In the Middle Ages, the Priory community used the Undercroft for storage, with meals taken to the well-lit refectory on the upper floor. This was in contrast to most orders of medieval monks, who normally located their refectories at ground level. King Henry VIII suppressed the priory and in the 1540s St. Alave's Priory was sold to Sir Henry Jerringham and he built a large house on the back of the site, some of which still exists out the back here. Even though the priory crumbled, he wasn't all bad. In his will, he made a provision to turn his house into an almshouse for poor men. His house seems to have been built over three stories. This and the adjacent room are surviving fragments. The building was destroyed in 1784, along with more of the Priory ruins. At the back here, you can see the nave of the Priory Church and the large foundations that would have supported the vaulted ceiling. So there we go, Suntalave's Priory is definitely one of those blink and you'll miss it places because there's no real signage um, other than a couple of tiny brown signs and telling you roughly where to look for it. And it really is a fascinating old building that has stood the test of time since the mid 1200s, which is pretty old. So now I've had a look around there, should we head back to the marina and I will tell you why I chose to put my boat in that marina. Oh, and you've got to say hi to the local llamas. Hello llamas. So we're about to go back over St. Alave's Bridge, back to the marina. St. Alave's basically has one road, no shops, a chandlery, which looks like that. I'm not sure what they sell there, but they seem to do boat hire and I'm pretty sure you could pick up some fenders, it appears. Um, it does have a pub, the Bell Inn, show over my shoulder, right there. And we've been there for lunch once. It's got a real nice beer garden right there, which of course at this time of year is empty, um, but was really busy when we were there and serves pretty good food. The food's pretty nice. Um, and it's a two minute walk from my marina, which is over there. So I picked St. Alave's Marina primarily because of its location. Um, St. Alave's as a village has not much going on, but as a location, it's great because there's so many different places you can go to. 
With the marina being where it is, it's remarkably secure because not only do not many people come round here, but it's also fenced off from the rest of the world. If you want to get in during the daytime, you can go in via the office, but people will see you. Um, but unlike somewhere like Beckles, where all and sundry can just walk past your boat, uh, after the office shuts at five, you have to have a fob to get in. And I have tried when I forgot my fob once to get in late at night, and it's like Fort Knox. So when you're not on your boat every day, that's actually not a bad thing because of course you can leave your boat reasonably safe in the knowledge that nothing's going to happen to it. And there's always people down there. There's a few people living on the marina. So people will spot if someone a little untoward is walking up your pontoon. But actually, even to get on the pontoon, you need to know a security code to get through the gate. So there are multiple levels of security. And why people feel like beeping when you're holding a camera to your face, I have no idea. But it's also nice and quiet as soon as you get off the main road. Should we have a look at the marina from the air and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so we're high up above my mooring and you can see back into the marina itself. There is a toilet and shower block, which is that black building with the red roof in the foreground alongside the newly provisioned laundry services. You can also see the winch crane down at the bottom right of the screen where my boat is going to get taken out shortly for reasons that you'll find out in a future vlog. As we pan away from the marina itself, you can see that's the new cut which will take any boat up towards Norwich or they can then turn right and go towards Great Yarmouth. Then flying down the other way, this is heading south, and you'll head towards Summer Layton. You can see the Broads Authority Centre on the right hand side there. There's also a local train station which you can get trains from there all the way into Norwich or down to Lowestoft if you need to get to a larger town or city. So the marina offers plenty of variation if you want to head different directions instead of just leaving your mooring every day and heading upstream or downstream, you've got plenty of options should you want them. So there we go, I hope this video has been useful. It's a different style of video for me, so if it's, um, if it's been useful, please let me know. You know the drill by now. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. It makes a huge difference to my YouTube ranking and all that type of nonsense. And I will see you in two weeks where we will go somewhere else on the Norfolk Broads. Thanks for watching and bye for now.